Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and today we are doing our folk art pattern. Oh, We have Keenan here working the camera. Keenan here, hello. And we will be doing this project in three steps. Oh. So our very first step is we are going to paint the center. Our second step is we are going to do the left hand side. Mm -hmm. Our third step is the right hand side. That's it's, it. That's a great way to <laughs> organize. <laughs> Um, I, I know uh, this project is fun, but, um, you know, don't, um, how do I say this? Underestimate it because this is a lot of like line work. Mm. Um, so it could possibly be tricky. I think it's going to be good, but I think it's a great practice in brush control and thin and thick lines. Cool. Uh, we are using one color for this project and one paintbrush. We're using our round six. And we are using space blue. One Wait. color and one brush? One color, one brush. Whoa. That's a power play, I think. Now, the theme for this month's box is Huga, mm. which um, I used to pronounce it high gee. It is not that. I was calling it high G for a while. Ooh, I like that one better. Thank you. Um, but it comes from Scandinavia. Scandinavia denotes, let me check my notes here to make sure that I'm saying the right countries. Um, Denmark, Sweden, and Norway. And Huga comes from Denmark. And um, with this kind of pattern, I wanted to kind of get us in the calming mood. So Huga is, I mean, like, it's not part of my culture, so I, I looked up what it meant, and I'm trying really, really hard to understand it, so I really hope that I'm effectively communicating it, and I apologize if I am not. Um, but it's like cozy contentment. So it's about small pleasures that you find um, joy in. So that could be just hanging out with friends, that could be watching a movie, that could be doing a puzzle, that could be sitting down and painting. Just nothing huge, but something that makes you feel like um, when you're done, it felt like a hug, cool. you know? Yeah. So with this project, I wanted us to um, celebrate um, Scandinavian folk art. I wanted us to celebrate cozy contentment. And so we are going to do this project. I'm in. Great. Um, so what we're going to do is actually before we do our oath and before we do our transfer our outlines, I wanted us to just do a quick guide on how to get thin and thick lines with a round paintbrush. So rounds are the most common paintbrushes used in watercolors because they have a thick belly and a narrow point. And the benefit of that is that you can get thin lines and thick lines just depending on your pressure. Now this is especially important in watercolor because if you guys have painted with watercolor before, it kind of matters when you make your marks if your paper is wet if your paper is dry so some areas you're supposed to work quickly some areas you got to wait for it to move so the flexibility of getting thin and thick lines um, just is wonderful from a timing perspective so you don't have to just keep switching brushes um, to get a thin line, what I like to do is I hit my brush off the side of the cup so it's not dripping. I grab a little bit of paint and I'm gonna be using the tip of my brush with light pressure. And look how thin I can get my lines. So thin. Now, if I want a thick line, I am going to wet my brush, hit it off the side of the cup so it's not dripping, pick up paint, and I'm going to hold my brush a little bit more on the side and I'm gonna use the full belly of the brush. I'm gonna push, ooh, I don't have enough water. Let me get more water. I'm gonna push down. So see the difference in our thick and thin lines that we can get just by adjusting our pressure and slightly adjusting our hold. Now, one thing that I want you to practice is I want you to practice a continuous line that goes back and forth between thin and thick lines. It almost will look like a ribbon. So. I'm going to take my round six, I'm gonna start thin, and then I'm gonna push down, and then I'm gonna go up thin, and then I'm gonna push down. Mm. So this is just a way for you to practice a continuous thin and thick line just by adjusting your pressure. The technique is a little bit tricky, but it gets there with practice, but it's super helpful because actually, this is what we will be using um, like when we outline some of our leaves you can do one single stroke as a leaf, or you can kind of outline it and let there be thin and thick differences, you see? Cool. That's a great practice idea for the thin and thick, figuring out that 
The ribbon? The ribbon, yeah, that's cool. It's also how I like to do my leaves for long ones like that, see? Yes. And then sometimes I curve down. So if you want to, you know, get, feel more comfortable at that, just paint a ribbon. And the nice thing is I want it to go like as many different directions as it can. Kind of like work around different things. It's pretty fun. That's Very super cool. Fun. That's super cool. <laughs> and a great practice. Now, please know that I suggest supplies, but you can use whatever you have and also use whatever you're comfortable with. Just because I'm using a round six, that doesn't mean you have to. If you have a round two and you feel much better getting these like thin, thin detail lines with the round two, use a round two. You're the artist. I'm not going to be like yelling at you. I can't see what you're doing actually. Yeah. So <laughs> how, how really are you going to yell? Yeah. Um, okay. So that's our practice. Do that as many times as you need to. And I do want to say that even though we have an outline with this, it's a lot of line work and trying to get like even thin lines from an outline is actually kind of tricky. So just be kind to yourself, okay? But I know you guys can do it. What I was thinking actually when I made this, I've always had a love for um, this kind of like symmetrical folk art pattern illustration. I think it's beautiful. Um, I love it so much. And I was thinking like, as we're going through, um, this is for November, I was thinking about Thanksgiving and I was thinking about table settings. And wouldn't it be so fun if like, you know how like people put like craft paper down and you can even do like this kind of symmetrical design as the table setting underneath the plate for Thanksgiving dinner. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be super cool. Okay, so that was just some, I was trying to think of some fun things. It could be such a cute card. Even I mean, if you guys got the holiday card making box, you can totally use that navy color and do like this gorgeous little. Yeah. Okay, And Sorry. I feel like with this outline, you can choose the smaller pieces and put them in different spots even. Yeah, and like, sorry. I gotta check it. So you tape your outline to your paper. You're gonna put your um, graphite paper, dark, shiny side down. And every mark you make, it's gonna be transferred to your paper um, with the graphite paper. Now, the nice thing about this project is we're essentially just going over our outlines. So we don't have to worry about pressure too much. But you could even take this idea and totally run with it and create your own. So maybe if you were to take out like the middle section and then like put more stuff along the side. I'm actually now looking at this as though it's shaped like a turkey. <laughs> Is it shaped like a turkey? I don't know. <laughs> I've decided partially. And just as you're kind of outlining it, we do have a lot of lines. That outline is going to take a while. I want you to embrace the kind of meditative aspect of repeated marks, mark making, um, and just kind of find that space mentally where when you walk away from it, you feel full instead of depleted. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You don't want it to take away from you. Right. Unless it's taking away the bad juju magumbo. I don't know what you said, but that's right, Keenan. Yes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, so we transferred our outline, and just so you know, the tricky thing about having one single piece of tape at the top of your outline is sometimes your paper will move a little bit, like to the side. So you can see that my outline is slightly crooked. Um, I don't care though, I'm just gonna keep going because this is just for fun. This is just not a, you know? Yes. But if you want to avoid that, what you can do is instead of doing one single piece of tape at the top and middle, do a tape on either side. And that way it stays straight um, when, you, when you transfer it. Now, before we get started, it was actually funny because I was, I was waiting for Keenan to get here to film. And I was thinking about <laughs> <laughs> And I was thinking about this pattern. He's not saying anything. <laughs> I just called him out. And <laughs> And it reminded me of actually a book I bought from an illustrator that um, I loved years ago. I think I probably bought it like five years ago. And so I ran home and got it. And um, it's called Imagine a Forest. And I just think she's an illustrator. Um, I, I don't think I'll say her name right, but Dinara um, Mertilipova. And her work, I just think, is so um, fun and just the symmetry, Whoa. the details, the leaves. Um, it totally reminded me of this. And um, she's not Scandinavian, but I felt like that there was a relationship between what we're painting today and her um, own artistic illustrative style. So I just kind of wanted to show um, some options and also that you can change the color palette on this. I decided to do just space blue to keep it simple, but you guys can switch out the colors in this and um, really have fun with it. Make it your own. But I love those. Yeah, isn't it just... Oh, the alphabet? That's neat. Yeah, she did the alphabet. She has nesting dolls. Um, I just love it. I think it's so beautiful. Her animals, cool. her flowers. So, just wanted to uh, call attention and... Um, I mean, even just look at the inside cover. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. So just so fun. Just, I love it. I love it when artwork makes me feel joy when I look at it and illustration does that, especially that kind of style. So I guess okay. had I been here on time, I was going to suggest that book. So <laughs> well, I'm if glad you were, if you were here on time, I wouldn't have been able to go get it and show everybody. So really we should thank you, Keenan. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't even have to say it. You came up with that. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Oh, we got to do our oath. Oh. Thanks for reminding me, Keenan. I was going to. You're on it today. You're welcome. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Thank you. All right, so I got my round six. I'm gonna grab some space blue. Now you can see in some of these areas, I filled them in, some of them I didn't. You guys get to make those decisions. You don't have to follow exactly what I'm doing. Now these kind of bigger areas, you can play with dropping in color and some of it and just kind of really celebrating that wet on wet technique to get different textures and blooms. I think I forgot to draw my middle line, but that's okay. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go for it. Now it's at these points, the thin lines um, that I get a little bit, gotta work myself up to them. You know what I mean? Because like, with thin lines, you can really, they're obvious when they're a little bit off, um, but we're just gonna go for it. Now, when you do long, thin lines, you wanna move your shoulder and not plant your wrist. It allows more length in your movement. So, and sometimes what makes it easier for me to do long lines is if I slightly move my paper. Now you've done it. And kind of do it from this side. And you go up. I like to go down to up from the bottom to the top. Um, but everybody is different, so try it. Try going top down, try going horizontally and turning your paper, like try it all the different ways because there is gonna be a way that resonates with you and is easier for you. It's my, oh, let me straighten out my. 
I think I go up to down. You start at the top and start go down? Start at the top, I think, because I like drag my arm. Okay. I can't, if I push, I go hard right. Oh, okay. But maybe an angle would help. I do better when my paper is turned. I, it's way easier for me to do it sideways than to do up and down. Mm. And then this is where we can start playing. I mean, eventually I filled these in for some contrast, but this is where you can start kind of playing with thin and thick line outlines. Oh, that's fun. Okay, and now that was step one. <laughs> and now we're gonna move on to step two, which is essentially we're gonna do the left side and then the right hand side. Um, if you are right handed, then do the left hand side first. If you are left handed, do the right hand side first so then you don't accidentally like plant your hand in your painting. And I'm just going to uh, go for it. Ooh, that's a pretty leaf. I like that shape. Leaves are one of my favorite things to paint. I love that they could be wonky. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like when I look at a leaf, I have so much freedom in color, in shape, in movement. Now you can see here, compared to my reference photo in this, my stem line is a lot thicker, but that's okay. You know, I'm not, I'm not gonna get mad at myself or beat myself up over a painting. That's not what this is about. We're here to just like enjoy the movement of the brush on the paper and celebrate it. Well, that looks like a little heart. Yeah. And if you're not as comfortable getting like thin and thick lines when it comes to leaves or shapes where you're just like, I'm trying really hard, but I just can't get the leaf shape I want by trying to do it in a single stroke. Well, don't stress about it. Just um, draw it and then fill it in. So if you're not yet to a place where you can do it just a swoop, then just outline it and then fill it in and it'll have the same effect. I just think it'd be so fun to do this with many different colors. I like the blue though. I mean, this blue, <clears throat> excuse me, is just one of my favorite colors. I also like projects where I feel like while I'm kind of looking at thin and thick lines, I, my mind can wander, mm -hmm. you know, like I don't have to, ooh, I stuck my hand in my paint. But I can kind of just follow the guide and not have to think too hard about what it is that I'm doing, you know? That's actually what I was thinking about earlier when back in the day you'd say, oh, detail mode, and it'd be real quiet. Mm -hmm. And this is detail mode activated. Yeah, detail mode activated, that's for sure. Now you can see here, you can't really see it that much on the screen. I smeared this blue a little bit. It actually isn't bad. Um, so I don't think I'm gonna do anything about it. I feel like me trying to clean it up would actually make it more obvious. Um, but what a tool that you can use to clean up any small smears like this or unwanted marks is a um, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. Mm. So I feel like I've demoed, I think we have a video on how to use it on our 
um, YouTube channel. Yeah. So um, feel free to, to take a look at that, but it's super helpful when trying to clean up um, unwanted marks. Now, if you have a little bit of a tremor when you do paint, um, I know that I said not to plant your wrist when doing thin lines, but see if planting your wrist um, helps to kind of steady a little bit. Another thing that I really love about kind of doing the single stroke technique is my brush tends to be a little bit drier when I do that, mm. which allows for this kind of like fuzzy, ed te fuzzy edge texture, um, which I personally love. Oh, it's the technique of the week. It's the, it's the technique of my life. Yeah. <laughs> Dry brush texture. It's the, it's the weekly <laughs> technique of the week. Like I just every almost every project I'm like, all right, how can I how can I use this? <laughs> how can I? Now when we talk about um, folk art, what that refers to is like folk and I don't know if it's folk or folk. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I can't say. <laughs> I can't say f f folk, folk without folk. the without adding the s folks, 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 folks. Me and Keenan were having a debate on how it said before we started filming, so I, I still don't know what's right because I never believe Keenan when right. he tells me something. Exactly, <laughs> which is the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but what we're talking about is it refers to like um, a specific region and then the traditional or everyday within that region. Um, so this is why this is Scandinavian folk art where, you know, another region would have different imagery and there the like folk art would be considered something else. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Usually too in the fine art, fine art world, Folk art refers to kind of more utilitarian art or art where it kind of overlaps with like <clears throat> trade, like maybe like wood making or fibers or things like that. And it usually um, denotes to someone who doesn't have fine art education experience background, but more um, like another kind of trade background, but they still make um, like creative things with it. Does that make sense? Almost like a, a practical ability turned into art. Yeah. Does that make that mm -hmm. kind of kind of? Yeah. Because you said working with fibers like a woodworker or something. Yeah, more like that. utilitarian. Utilitarian. Um, that yeah. kind of thing. Without traditional fine art training. Yeah. But it's actually I remember in art history, um, we would talk about and I can't remember any names now. <laughs> now that I need to know the names, but um, I remember seeing work like paintings from. Um, f folk artists who didn't have like artistic fine art training or like education when it comes to like painting and drawing like we do now and it was actually super fascinating to see their work um, because I feel like when you approach something um, without the technical knowledge you are free to explore shapes and ideas um, like openly. Does that make sense? Where it's just like someone who's just like, I don't know how to draw a horse, but I'm going to just paint a horse and then seeing what they come up with of how they view a horse in their mind is fascinating, mm. I feel. So um, it was actually like really interesting to see. And that's why, um, you know, I try and give you guys information so you can, you know, feel successful in our learning, but also like don't skip through this like magical stage of beginner because when you have a beginner mindset, 
you don't know the rules and it's a little bit easier to explore new techniques, explore new materials or approach subject matter a certain way because you're not held down by the tradition of how things are done. I mean, for me, even watercolor, um, when I was first started learning, I didn't really have a lot of watercolor experience and I didn't know until much later that the supplies that I preferred, like liquid watercolors, um, are not actually traditionally used for watercolor. Um, also how I approach projects where with watercolor you try and start with the lights first and then you just layer on top of that. Um, but I came from kind of like an, an oil acrylic background and so I would put the darks in first and then blend out to the light. So it just was a different way of approaching things. And I feel like that gives me a little bit more freedom when I approach a project to say, okay, do I want to do it in layers or do I want to do it this way? Where it kind of opened up ways of how I can get something done, which was a valuable lesson for me because then I learned that there isn't just one way to do something. And I really don't think one is better than the other. I think it's just our own preferences. I agree. In my brief research of the Huga mm -hmm. lifestyle, yeah, there's a lot of stuff out there about Huga stuff. Okay, tell us about it. Well, it's all the same. <laughs> but that was the interesting thing. The, the, the fact that it was all, everything I've read so far has been about it is embracing a simple lifestyle that brings you joy. Yeah. The whole thing, all of them, even in the pictures, it's like, oh, we want you to be overwhelmed with simple, cushiony, cozy, fuzzy pillows. Mm -hmm. Like, that's it. Yeah. Even one of them was, uh, can you Huga alone? And that was a great question that I saw. Oh, can you? Yeah. Oh, so great. Absolutely. Embrace the solo. Awesome, because painting is definitely a solo thing for me. Yes. I'm going to be honest. Right. It's not a battleground, a war zone. You know, it's a, it's a peaceful zone. <laughs> Can't, can't paint dual people. <laughs> what? I don't know. I just made it up. <laughs> I, uh, I actually read something that said, you know, how, how can you live a more Hugo lifestyle? Because the Danish mm. are the happiest people in the world. Right. That was a study I read. They mentioned a study they did. Yes. I read about a study. I did not read the study. I want to clarify. <laughs> I'm not trying to read studies about... Studies are... They're intense. They're intense. There's a lot. My husband actually likes to read studies. He subscribes to the Neuroscience Magazine, whatever. And um, he uh, tells me, he's like, I read this really interesting study. Would you like to read it? And I'm like, nope, I do not. But why don't you tell me what you learned? Because that's interesting. You a summary of <laughs> bullet points? Yeah, seriously. A spark notes? Can you just give me an itemized list, please? <laughs> <laughs> um... But it was talking about how one thing is to eliminate multitasking and to eliminate like stressors. And I thought that was interesting. Like, I guess I always associated it with just like doing activities that brought cozy comfort. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it is part of other things too where, and I feel like it just talks about how everything is connected. You know what I mean? Like if you want that feeling of contentment and that joy, what are we bringing into our life that's unnecessary um, that we stress about? Mm. And if we want to um, really have this lifestyle of contentment, how do we learn to let some of those things go? Stress is a really interesting thing. And it sounds like the Hugo lifestyle is what we all need. I definitely think that there is, there's something to it. I saw a picture of a Hugo outdoor setting. Yeah. <sighs> Life goal. So it was, there was some greenery, but then just a huge outdoor soft sectional, lots of pillows, mm. you know, probably near like a fire pit. Oh. Fireplaces definitely give that kind of cozy 
vibe. I don't have one in my house, which makes me really sad. And so what I do when I want to feel that coziness is I totally put on the fireplace movie. Oh, on Netflix or On something? Netflix, and nice. I read a book. I love it. I do it all the time. <laughs> Turn on a heater on full blast. <laughs> yeah. I have a space heater next to me. <laughs> or Michael's just like... <sighs> <laughs> He's just breathing <laughs> on you. <laughs> But it does the it does the job, that kind of crackling fire sound. I love it. That's that great. warm glow. And one day I'll have the real thing. Okay. Now this is where I'm gonna kind of look and see where I've maybe missed a couple. I mean, there's a lot of little pieces in here, so it's possible that I didn't trace one. Um, and this is where I can decide, and can I see the overhead view? Yes, ma'am. I can decide like, okay, do I wanna like thicken some areas up? And by thicken, I mean, when you fill an area in, it's gonna have more of a presence compositionally. So if I want the viewer's eye to be a little bit more directed towards the center of this painting, and I don't feel like it's totally doing that, by filling in these leaves, it's gonna make the viewer's eye go right to that center. You see that? Wow. How it changed that? And so if you're looking at, and this is valuable no matter what you're painting, even if you're not painting something like this, you can use the fullness and darkness of a color to bring attention to something or not, where you're just like, I want something there. Like if you're doing a floral, bo floral bouquet, you're like, I want something there, but I know that if I make it dark or fill it in, it would actually like make my comp composition too heavy on that side. We'll just do an outline of leaves instead of like big, thick leaves. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yep. Um, so I feel pretty good about that. What I might do just for fun is add a little bit more like, I kind of love doing these little like, details, you know? Adding a few little small elements to it. Yeah. Maybe I'll do another little flower right here. Oh, that's cute. That is cute. But everything you do on one side, you need to do on the other, so. That's where I would get lost. Yeah. But it's a great practice in like looking. Oh yeah, that and would And trying be. to make something kind of even, you know? This is a great project too, because I'm not good on one or the other side, depending on the thing I'm painting. Mm -hmm. So this would be great to like fix that wrist action, figure out, you know what I mean? For the yeah. smooth lines, that sort of thing. This is great. And then if you want to do little like detail lines, maybe like dots or something around, maybe just veins in the leaves. Have fun with this. Play with this. See where it goes. See where it takes you. Um, you don't have to have something, a perfect composition in mind. What I did to paint this project is I actually just started drawing and then like I kind of started doing like the left hand side a little bit and then I was just like, okay, well it's got to have its complement, it's got to have its match. So then I just did the same thing on the right side and I just kind of went back and forth like this. Hmm. So um, play with that, have fun with that, see what you can make with that. And that's our project. That's it for today. This is great. There's, you don't even need a tape reveal. No. Wow. We got we got our nice white edge. And um, I hope that through this time with us, you were you feel like you're walking away from painting with friends and you feel a little bit cozy like you just had an art hug from your friends here at Let's Make Art. I hope you um, remember to take joy and find contentment in the small, simple pleasures of your life um, so you can f like actually enjoy life and not be so in your head about all of the things all the time. Mm. Um, Keenan, always a pleasure. Thanks for being on time, Sarah. <laughs> you know, and <laughs> 
If you need any of these supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. If you want to share your work, we have all the hashtags and information in the video description. We love to see what you make. And I know it's really scary posting your work as a beginner, but it's when we share our work when we're not super confident and we know it's not perfect that we can eliminate the stereotype that art is something that you're born with or not. And that's just not true. Art is a skill that will increase with improvement over time by just committing to it. And so um, I fully believe that. So if you want to get better at painting, all you got to do is just keep showing up. And we'll be right here week after week with the new watercolor tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.